Welcome to another edition of the Kilts at Home Center. Today we're going to be talking about greases. Before I uh, get to talking about these, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit and then the application I'm trying to use these types of greases for. Um, there's some controversy in some of these greases and using the application I'm going to talk about, but we're going to kind of go through that. I'm kind of testing to see what could work and what will do the, what I want it to do. Um, of course, I have a many years of experience. I'm an, I'm an older individual, obviously. And uh, for a time, I worked as a oil salesman for an oil company, and we used to sell oil to industrial plants, garages, um, fleets, uh, even logging operations and stuff. So we, I sold lubricants to many different types of organizations. And as part of that, uh, train, I was trained uh, numerous times. I was trained uh, by Shell, Rotel, or excuse me, Shell Oil Company out down in Houston, Texas. I had a one-week training with them. They went all through different types of lubrications that they offered and sold. Also a company by the name of Kendall Motor Oil. I don't know if you've heard of them. I went through some of their training also. Again, I don't profess to know a lot about oils and greases. I know just enough about to get me in trouble. Um, but I also um, do have a little bit of knowledge because I don't have maybe the chemistry behind it, but I do have an understanding of the products. So what I'm trying to do is I have a 48N tractor. And um, one of the things that I have problems with is the gearbox. Uh, the, the steering gearbox is leaking oil. Now, from the factory, they call for using an 80-90 um, uh, weight of gear oil, which is this right here. And if you have perfect seals, it works out really well. But you can see this is really moves around, and it, it, it can really, it can leak out of a seal really easily, and that could be a problem. So I've seen some individuals say, in fact, let me have you come over here. I can show you how it's leaking out right here right now. Now that's not 80-90 gear oil in there. I'll show you the oil that I'm, I have in there right now, or the grease, and I'll show you the problem that I'm trying to combat. So there, some individuals will say um, they will drill and tap the one bolt on this 8N, 48N steering box, and some say, I'll just pack it full of grease until it's coming out the top. Well, that might be great while the grease is working, but you can see this is a number two grease, set, a wheel bearing grease that most people enjoy, or not enjoy, but use when they're greasing their equipment. And you can see that doesn't move around. It pretty much stays where it's at. And that can be problematic in, reg in regards to steering or any types of gears because as the steering gears are working back and forth, they can push that grease away. And it could basically go up the sides of your gear case and then it's not getting on the points that it needs to or it's getting pushed away from the bearings inside of the gearbox. And so it works great initially, but if that grease isn't kept on those, those things, then it creates a problem. So that's one problem I think that's not going to work very well. I tried a double, what they call it, this company calls a double ot grease. This one here, um, which to me seems, from my experience, seems a little thin for a double ot grease. You can see that there. It's slightly better than the gear oil, but it's still pretty fluid and and leaks by, by seals. In fact, that video, that part I showed you a while ago leaking out of the gearbox was this stuff right here. So it's not doing what I need to do. Now, of course, I could go through and replace the seals, but I, I think that it, my other option is going to work out a lot better. So I'm still thinking about drilling and tapping uh, one of the bolts on this here, and we're going to show that on another video to put grease in, but the grease I'm gonna to try to use is what they call a cornhead grease. Uh, jo this is a John Deere brand. It's also made by uh, Agco and a couple other companies make the same type of cornhead grease, which is, now this is a single lot grease, not a double lot. This is a double lot. Like I said, that looks a little thin for a double to me, um, but this one here is definitely more fluid-like. And you can see here in this video, or in this picture here, that's a double lot grease. That is willing to fill in voids and it moves around. If you go like that, you can see it wants to move. In fact, when I initially put it in here, it was all the way up here and all I did was put the cap on it and go like that one time and boom, the grease all comes down. From what I understand, and that's part of what we're gonna try and test, this grease, people are, guys use it in their brush hogs when they have leaky seals in their gearbox or the brush hogs, because this is developed for use in a gearbox. Now, this grease here, as it gets warm, it starts to get more fluid. And I think it doesn't get quite this thin, but it starts to get a little bit thinner. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the experiment I'm gonna do today and tonight. So here are the spork, you can see that grease is moving around. And they say the more it starts to move around, the more it starts to get like a liquid. And you can see that grease wants to fall off. 
it doesn't stay on very well. It kind of wants to come down. And so what I was told by some individuals, and we're going to test this theory, is that this grease will seek, a, seek to be in the low level of the gearbox. So in other words, the gears may push it out, but as things warm up or as it gets moved, it's going to start getting more fluid and settle down. Now, of course, this could be affected by temperature and stuff like that. Um, but I think this grease is going to work really well in that application because, like I said, it's wanting to fall off there. It's not as rigid as the number two grease, which is right here. I'll show you the number two grease. This is the, the single lot grease. And then this is the number two grease like we I showed you earlier. You can see that stuff really, I could hit it on the table and it, it really doesn't want to move. It stays where it's at, which is great for wheel bearings and... Um, you know, grease fitting applications, you want something that's gonna stay in there. You wouldn't want something like this. But for a gearbox, I think this is gonna work better. So part of my experiments, I'm gonna draw, put a tiny little hole in the bottom of each one of these. Obviously, I'm pretty sure we know the answer to that one. But I'm gonna put a tiny little hole in the bottom and I'm gonna let it sit here for a time and see how much of it gets by that tiny little hole and leaks past, which is kind of like leaking past the seal. And so, like I said, I wanted to experiment with it. Again, I think a lot of the guys that say this isn't really a good application, I think they have good intentions, but what I'm seeing, and I've been reading about this corn head grease or this single eye grease, is it's willing to, to work as practically almost like a fluid, but still it's still kind of more towards grease. So I think in a gearbox in this, if the gearbox is full, it's gonna move around, but it's also, it's gonna be able to, to grease the bearings and keep things lubricated, which is really important. And like you said, this 8090, uh, which is very similar to what they want to use, this just, it goes right by the seals. It doesn't hold up really good. Um, I'm sure it was great when it was originally developed, but I think from what I understand, a lot of manufacturers, even in the 50s and 60s, there's some, I saw a service bull in this that recommended leaky gearboxes to go to using a single lot grease in that application. So we're going to pause for a second. I'm going to put some, uh, put some tiny little holes in here and we'll start our experiment. All right, welcome back. It's been an, uh, exactly an hour later with this experiment. What I did was I took a drill bit in the bottom of each one of these and I drilled a 1 16th inch hole. That's the smallest drill bit I possibly had. And we drilled a 1 16th inch hole in the bottom of each one of these. And I have to be honest, there was no surprises in this experiment. I should have added this earlier and I'll tell you that right now. I'm in my workshop and right now I have this temperature set at 50 degrees. Um, not very hot, not very cold. Um, and it's 50 degrees in here. It's, it's been a nice, decent day today outside. Um, it's winter time, but it's 50 degrees in here. So this is the 8090. Like I said, each one of these has a 1 inch hole in the bottom. Smallest bit I could find. I thought it was a little bit big, but I just want to kind of simulate a seal and, and oil leaking by the seal. So first, we're going to pick up the 8090 gear oil. And you can see that's been leaking out pretty regular. Again, it's probably not going to come out as fast as it probably wants to come out because it's sitting on top of this and it's kind of slowly wicking it away. This is the grade two grease. Nothing even looked to come out of that hole there. It stayed in there pretty good. It's all dry, no issues there. Now this is our single lot grease. Nothing coming out there. It's staying in there. It's still, you know, obviously moves around, but nothing came out and leaked on that. Now this is our double lot grease, which I said looked a little thin for a double lot grease. And We've got leakage there. So you can see that would definitely leak by a seal, just like the 8090 gear oil will leak by a seal. Looks like the 8090 leaks a little bit more if I had to, to guess. But the single lot grease, which is kind of more of a fluid grease, um, does not have any leaks. So to me, that's a positive. And I think that'll work really well on the 8N. So my idea behind this is, is using... Um, tapping, uh, taking one of the, the steering gearbox bolts out that they talk, they show, and we'll do that on another video, drilling it, putting a grease zerk on it, and filling the gearbox, the steering gearbox, with um, single lot or corn head grease, the John Deere brand is what I happen to have. Um, had It was available, so I, I'm using it. So that's my idea, is to fill the gearbox with it, and enough so that it goes to the top bearing on the um, 8N, there's a bearing on the steering column, so the grease is going to get pushed in and then it's going to come up to that bearing. So that way everything's getting, is going to be full and gear is going to have area room to move, move once it's the, uh, the, you're moving the steering wheel, the gear sectors are going to be moving inside and the bearing is going to be moving around 
and they're all going to be getting a good coating increase. I, I would not want to use the number two. Some guys say, hey, I just keep putting a couple shots in every now and then. I don't like the idea. That I think the <laughs> number single lot grease would be the best, or the corn head grease would be the best in this application. I think it'll do the, exactly what we wanted to do. Um, I can see the, the, the use of that in a brush hog. I've seen some videos of guys using them in brush hogs and that have leaky seals in the bottom of the brush hog. It still gets the grease around. It does what it does. Again, you, I don't think you'd want to use a single or a number two grease on that. But I think a, a single lot would work really well in that application. This is just a brief, simple experiment. I know some guys will argue, well, in really cold weather, it won't work. But I think it'll do decent in this in my environment where I work and the type of work I do. So I thank you for taking the time to stay through this video. I know there's not a lot of videos out there showing the differences in the types of grease, especially in the application of many of us 8N users and wanting to do the best that we can for a gearbox. One thing I will add, I see some guys say, well, I had it in my gearbox and my gearbox failed. Well, they also, some of the same individuals said they were having problems with your gearbox before they even put the single lot grease in. So I would say if you're having problems with your gearbox, you need to take it down and get any repair or anything in it and then put the single lot grease in there. So that's just my opinion. And I, I think that's what we're going to do. And that's what I know, know that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the single lot grease in there and I'm sure it'll be really well. And I don't think I'll have any regrets in that. Thank you for watching another uh, edition of the Kilton Homesteader. I hope you were able to get something out of this video. If you like our channel, I, I encourage you to subscribe. We would love to have you to, uh, on our videos. Again, we try to keep our uh, videos very diverse and informative uh, for things around the homestead and also in the workshop. And I, it's really great to have you on. If you do like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And you can also hit the notification bell there to be notified when new videos come out. Thank you very much and have a good evening.